Okay, did you write down a list of what you'd like me to help you with? You know, I only have the MPC one since like a month or something like that, you know, and sure. um, before I've been, I've been making beats and still do on the, on the DAW, what I want to learn is I want to use my MPC also for chopping samples. And, yeah. you know, I've been yeah. watching uh, plenty of these videos on YouTube and there's always a point when I, you know, do you, you say, oh, now I would have a question, but you can't obviously because uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a video, right? So um, yeah. that's why I thought I'm, I'm, what I wanted to do is maybe go through the process uh, doing making a loop out of a sample. Maybe this session only have a loop without chopping it too much, just finding a loop, sample it, and then kind of, um, for example, time stretching. But uh, I don't know how to do that. I didn't figure it out yet, but I wasn't looking too much into it, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> so... Okay, well, there's there's many ways to do uh, chopping in the MPC to get things timed up, and there's many ways that you can do it without having to rely on time stretching, which, as you may well know, can introduce unwanted artifacts. Yeah. So on the MPC, you've got warp for the, each of the pads, and whilst it works for some samples, let's say you've got a rhythmic or a melodic loop that doesn't really yeah. have any drums in it. Yeah. Um, you're going to hear those kind of artificial kind of metallic sort of stretching uh, artifacts. So if you don't want those and you want some like a jazz sample, for example, you want that to sound as, as natural as possible. Yeah. The best way to do it is chop it at the main kind of transients or hits and then place it on the grid in either the same way as you want it to sound from the original loop or you might just have to accept that you might have to sh move some things around to get it to work yeah um there's another way of chopping which i prefer which is you can actually make any sample work even if it's a, co a completely different tempo and it almost is better in some ways because it adds a bit more funk to the actual loop and you can take any musical sample and it's it's down to where you place it yeah, yeah. in the grid or where you trigger it and you can you know, I could show you that now and you, you know, I've shown other people this and they've gone, how did you get that to work? And it's just about hearing it and going, okay, well, I, I like how it sounds. How do I time it up? Well, you just have to place it in the right position. And there could be many of those or there could just be one particular place that that actually works. A good way to show this is, and a good way to do it in general, is to load in a whole album's worth of material. So... If I do that, and then I can show you where I can just put the start point of that sample pretty much at any position yeah, and make something work. And that is basic chopping, yeah? And then yeah. it's just a case of maybe taking another, you know, just copying that pad to another pad and then setting them to the same mute group so they can choke each other. And then you get just another, you know, maybe another chord or another note or another melodic bit that works. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good, yeah. Okay, so if I double tap my menu button, I've got the MPC touch here, so that'll take me to my browser. Just type in prog. Prog albums, there you go. Ah, okay. So I'm going to choose any of these at random, okay? So I'm just going to turn off my audition. So I'm just going to load that onto my first pad. So I've pressed my first pad in the drum program. It's gone green. And just load that in. So then if I press and hold my menu button and press pad 14, it will take me to program edit. And then go to samples and that's the sample there. Oh. So I'm just going to go to the next page and just turn the level down for the pad for the layer, okay? And the next thing that I would do is go to global and turn it to note on. Uh, so we, So every time I press the pad, it doesn't just trigger this big long sample, okay? You know, do you know about note on and one shot? Not really. <laughs> okay, so one shot, if you press the pad, it will play the whole sample. And we don't want that because then we'd have to, you can stop it by double tapping your stop button on the transfer yeah, control. Yeah. But if it's in notes on mode, it will only play for as long as I hold it. Oh, that's good. That's, that's so something I didn't know, for example, you know, because yeah. that bothered me too, though, when I... Always had to double uh, tap the stop button and yeah, yeah, but that's a, that's good to know. Okay, so, so if I move my start point and 
just bring it up to here. There might be something interesting in here we can use. Oh, that's quite nice. Yeah. Okay, so then I can just press and uh, press my copy button. Press on the screen. If we're going to copy the green pad, which is pad one, and we're going to just press, you know, a couple of other pads. I've pressed ones. I've pressed two, three, and four, as you can see. Yeah. Okay. So now to choke these so they don't all overlap, we can either set them to the same mute group or we can put the entire program into into monophonic mode. So that's the quickest way. Yeah. So only one pad will play at the same time. Okay, so let's go to pad two. It's the same sample, but if you look underneath here where it says the name of the album, which is Edition Special, yeah. uh, make sure that yours says pad. If it's set to all, any changes to the start and end points you make will be reflected on the other pads. We want these to be independent, so we need it be, to be set to pad. Okay. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to move the start point here to this one, maybe. Let's just change. Okay, so we've got two chops there now. Um, this is pad three. I'm just going to choose some random stuff, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Maybe this hit at the end. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then pad four. Uh, hopefully, because you can see this is all drum work in the middle here, but there might be a, a little piece that we can take. All right, that, that's fine. A little vo vocal sound. Yeah. So now... If I go to my second track, so I'm going to press the plus symbol at the very bottom of the screen here. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Right. To add a new drum program, we press the plus symbol in the program area, just here. So now we've got an independent drum program, right? And um, this, this is just workflow stuff that I usually do. So if I go to track one, let's just go back to our first program. Let's call this Chops. Okay. Oh. This makes it easier to navigate when you're in the mixer. You can see what program you're mixing and the pads and stuff like that. Um, let's call the track chops as well. Go up to track two. You see it's assigned program two. Let's rename the program to drums and the track to drums. So now we know exactly where we're at. On track one, we've got our chops. Track two, we've got our drums. Okay. So I'm just going to go back to the browser, double tap menu. I'm just really going to create a simple drum kit by loading some drum sounds from this expansion pack, okay? Yeah, 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 that's okay. So underneath the search directory, I'm going to press the waveform symbol here. This will just show me the samples. And type in kick. So it's filtering out all the other content and just showing us samples. Okay, so I'm just going to choose, I'm going to turn my audition on now. All right, that, I'm going to put that kick on pad one. So load, press pad two, let's type in snare. Okay, just that claps fine. And then just type in hi-hat. Really simple drum kit. Right, that's fine. Just some basic drum sounds. So then I would change my BPM to, I assume you're making hip hop, right? Yeah, 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 right. Mm, bad. Sorry, Start. I should have asked. But, so I'm going to put this at 90 beats per minute, all right? Okay. Then I'm going to press my main record button on the transport. It's going to flash. I'm going to press play start. And we're going to get, um, I'm actually just going to change my sequence length to two bars. Uh, and now I'm going to press play start. I'll get a four beat count in. I'll just put in a simple beat, okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, you might have seen my video on gain staging. Um, it's where you uh, 
changing the level of the samples before they actually hit any effects or the main program itself. Uh. So it's just it's better if you're going to add some effects that you turn down your samples from here. So you see we're in the samples page in the program editor. Yeah. Go to the next page and you've got the level for each of your samples. So this isn't the pad level. This is the overall pad level. But if we added an effect to the samples, we've got no control over the amount of level that's being sent into the effect. Ah. Uh. So we need to return it down here before it hits the effect and then goes out of the pad volume. And a lot of people miss this. They just put their samples in and then they wonder why their effects are distorting. So it's good to turn it down from here for each of your samples. So I've just turned mine down to around 55, 60 on there, on there. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now I would just play around with the chops that I've got. Okay, so obviously I've just chosen these four basic ones, but we could change them at any point that we like. So because they're set to note on, that allows us to play with the amount of length, uh, amount of time that they actually play for. So we're not just triggering one shots, which might fall out of time over a couple of seconds. It allows you to control the amount of length, which gives you a lot more flexibility. So the, it becomes more choppy in that sense, you know? Yeah. So I could just literally try that now. So, you, you can hear there's like a bass line going on in that vocal section. Yeah. Now we could warp this pad. We could probably get away with warping that and that wouldn't sound too bad. Or we could filter it. And uh, could... that's... Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that was something I was interested too because a lot of times when, when I make beats, I uh, if it doesn't sound too distorted, I would filter out the bass line in, in my DAW. That's something I didn't figure out yet uh, how to do on the, on the MPC, like uh, each, one each, way or the other. Yeah, I mean, each pad in a drum program, you've got 128 pads, so tons of pads to play with, and you've got a filter for every one of those pads um, and different types. So on this second page for your envelopes is where you've got your filters. So... Mm -hmm. You could just on this one pad filter out the high frequency stuff and keep yeah. it back, keep the bass. So then it would be doing this. Yeah. Or you could put it to high pass and just retain the high stuff and get rid of the bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we could, pull, of course, put a, a, a reverb on on just that pad. Yeah. You know, uh, send it, send it into a return. Uh, if you don't know about, do you know about sends and returns? No. So, a send. If you go to the effects page, the first one on the effects page, you've got these four sends here. And what they do is allow you to send a separate feed of the volume of any sample into what's called a return, and on the return, you can add an effect. So that way you've got independent control over how much is sent into that actual effect rather than just placing an effect on the pad from here. Um, That's good. And especially with delays and reverbs, it's much better because you can shut off the volume of the pad, but the effect will still carry on. If you add the effect here, it's just going to be shut off by the pad and you won't get any control of, over it. And also you can share that effect between, you know, different pads as well, which for delays and reverbs is much better because they uh, take up more processing power than most other effects. So you go to menu, channel mixer, you go up to the top here where it says programs and change that to returns. Oh. And then you've got these four returns, but for each of those you can add four effects. So we would add, you know, maybe a reverb to this 
first slot in return one. Okay. Uh, let's just increase the time so you can hear it a bit better. And then in the program, going back to the program, you just open up send one and that's going to send the sound of this pad into that return. Oh. And what's nice about that is you can also go to the mixer and add, an, add a filter after it. So you can filter out the reverb itself. So if we go to filter and then just bring down the frequency, maybe add a bit of resonance. Now you get a more low pass filter uh, reverb. <clears throat> so you're creating an effects chain, right? Right. That makes sense? Yes, yes, yes. That's interesting. So that way you're making that sample, you know, last longer and also fit into your sequence more by using an effect and, you know, filtering out. So there's, you can see there's so many different ways of making this work. You know, these are just the, the, the default pitches. We could play around with the entire program pitch and make these samples work. You know, it, it's just, you know, how much you want to deviate from the original pitch. So we could turn this down maybe four semitones and it might work better at this pitch. So that guitar sample on pad two is a lot better timed now. Sorry, on pad one. But you can see that I've not, I've not sat here and scratched my head trying to time it up or anything. I've literally just chosen some sounds that I like and then yeah. because I know how to just place those samples, you don't have to do any of that time stretching, fiddling about moving notes around as a sequence, you know, getting frustrated. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's if you come from the position of this is the sound that I want to use first of all, and then go, okay, I know how to make that work because I know what the MPC can do and how I can manipulate that sound without relying on time stretching, which can make that sound sound unnatural, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um, one question that when you started, right? So um, this is something I, because when I was loading in samples, you know, you have to, you have a, like a, uh, like, um, no, I have to look at it now to myself. That's right. <laughs> um, when you load in the sample and you want to chop it, you can chop it like by yourself or you have like they, when, when you, uh, press certain. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. So I like to chop inside the drum program because then I can quickly go and adjust the filter and the pitch and the effects like I've just shown you, but. If you're in the sample editor, which is where you kind of do your more destructive type editing, yeah. that's that's where you get the kind of auto chop feature, which is just, you know, in the chop mode. So you can choose to chop by threshold or you can, you know, yeah, that works best yeah. when you've got, say, like a drum loop, you, you import a drum loop, make sure you've trimmed it so it loops perfectly. And then you can split it up into an equal, equal amount of divisions, just like you would do in recycle or something like that back in the day yeah yeah so i was always one because now the way you did it the question uh, is already more or less answered but uh, you know before i i was also i was always wondering how can i just keep what i need and delete the rest of the song you know so that's very easy so the way i've done it makes it easier because you can just isolate the region so Let's say, for example, for pad one, we yeah. committed to this and we don't worry about anything else. We just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just zoom in. It takes obviously a bit of time with these big long samples, but. And then let's just keep a bit of the more of this material just in case there was something here that we wanted. <laughs> Just gonna I probably messed that up a little bit now but it's fine I'm just want to show you this but you see that white arrow just above our end point this white yes. arrow that's flattened pad okay 
And what that will do, um, will flatten just that section of the sample down to a pad. And then we would do that for all the other pads. And then we would just purge all the unwanted material out of memory. Oh. Um, but that's just the RAM memory of this project. It's not the, obviously that MP3 still sits on my hard drive and we're not deleting that at all. No, no, no. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Also, you can see when I press that, this says it's unable to flatten the pad because sample play is set to note on. And that's fine. So temporarily, we just have to switch it back to one shot if we're going to flatten a pad and then flatten it. Let's give it no tail. We don't need a tail. That's if you've got a reverb or a delay on the actual pad and you want to capture um, that, that delay, the, the time that it takes for it to fade out. Okay, so we can just call this um, chop one. Okay, yeah. We, just, we don't have to rename it, but so press do it. So that's now baked that down onto one pad, and then we would do it for all the other pads. So I'm not going to do it, but it's just the same process. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, okay. But, but you'll hear that even that even though the semitones for that actual pad that we've just flattened is zero. <laughs> It's playing back a lot lo lower, and that's because I've dropped the entire program volume down minus four. So all you'd need to do in that case is compensate by bringing that back up to plus four. Okay, uh, does that does that make sense? Yeah. So if you do ch if you do flatten the pad, but you've already previously adjusted the entire program, you're going to just have to increase it or decrease it to match this. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll just show you what we would do for the case of the last pad, which has got a, right. a reverb tail on it. So again, we would set it to one shot just temporarily. So we just, again, isolate the region. Which is, yeah, just this section here, that's fine. Press do it. Make sure we increase that to plus four to compensate for this here. And then just make sure that the uh, send is open. When I put the whole loop in, in the DAW, I can't kind of, I can't, let's say, make the hi-hat. I know I do it all on the MPC1, on the uh, pad mix already. Yeah. So uh, roughly, I would say, but you can't do any more on the on Yeah, because it's all, to get, cause it's all yeah. together, right? Okay, so what you would do is go to menu, go to save, and then you've got audio mix down. Right. Now, there's a few things here. We've got two separate programs, right? We've got our chops and yeah. we've got our drums. Right. So all you would choose in that instance is separate programs. And you can see stereo output, the tick removes from there. So now we're going to, it's going to export two stems for the drums and the chops. Okay. okay. Also, um, because we're using the returns, we could also choose to export the returns and that'll export another file with the uh, information that's coming from that reverb, you know, on our re first okay. return. Uh, so you can also mix that and it will just be a reverbed version of that one chop that we've got. Okay. Or, or whatever chops are, are being processed by that return. Um, the other way that you can do it is let's say we had a drum program and you, do, do you know about the explode feature? I never haven't tried it yet. No, okay. No, so uh, someone told me about it. If yeah. we go to uh, the main page and go up to the drums. Yeah. We can then press the pencil icon in the uh, track area and you've got explode here. And that'll, ex that'll explode the notes for each of our drums, our kick, snare, and our hi-hat. And it will, I'll, I'll just do it to show you. Press explode. Yeah. You can see it mutes the master track for our drums. But on the next available track, it will put the kick. Okay, but you can see it's still the same drum program for track three, which is the kick, track four, which is the snare, and track five is the hi-hat. And you can oh. see that it names the track to, look, if we double tap there, you can see it's got track three kick, track four snare, track five hi-hat. 
even though it's the same program, but it's just, if we go to the grid editor where we can see our notes, you can see, look, these are just our kicks on this one track. Yes. On track, oh. on track four, it's the snare, and track five is the hi hats. So then if we were to press save audio mix down, we would choose explode tracks. So it will give us stems for each of those tracks as well. When I export it, uh, it would uh, do like three waves if it's like snare high kick and... Uh, uh, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll give us an isolated kick, an isolated snare and an isolated hi-hat. But in the length of the loop. Like, yeah, it'll be like, exactly, like, yeah. You'll, 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 oh. All you'll hear for the kick, let's say for the, for the uh, kick, so all, you'll, all, you'll hear, all you'll hear is this. Yeah, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what I needed too. Yeah. That's yeah. what I need. That that's uh, that's really great. Yeah. The thing is for me is because I think I know in the end it's all about mixing, but I think like you know that's the difference that I learned is the difference that I see uh, using the MPC is I feel like the sound of the drums is way better. Yeah. Like unlike when I just pull the drums into the DAW. You know, and compared to how the, there's more, I don't know, more, has more, it's stronger. It sounds stronger to me and deeper. And Because it's come from the MPC. Yeah, or maybe I just imagined that, but. <laughs> oh, what, what, ra rather than just bringing the drums in straight into the DIW and doing. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. Like, I mean, I've been doing beats for, for years like that, just Do using you, the DIW. Do you know why? A no, lot of no. it. A lot of it's got to do with the tactile nature of the pads and the sort of preliminary mixing that you would do in the MPC. So most of the time you wouldn't just, you know, you would mix the drums in the MPC first of all. You wouldn't just export the loop. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some people do, but it makes no sense to me personally to just chuck some drums in and then not, not adjust the levels because the samples are always going to be at different levels and... Yeah, sound, yeah. Be sound better if you do at least a little bit of mixing. I do all my mixing in the MPC. Okay. Um, and then, you know, because there's so, there's so many facilities to do that in the MPC. But yeah, of course, it's. I think a lot of it's to do, like, this is a good analogy. If uh, I don't know if you've ever used an electron machine, like the Octatrack. No. Or, so one of those machines is a good example because the, the pads on the... Uh, Uh, electron octatrack sampler is a they're, they're like these tappy buttons so when you press them it doesn't feel like you're hitting a drum it feels like you're hitting a button and then that button's triggering the drum but with the mpc you're hitting a pad just like you would do with a drum kit basically yeah, um, yeah and there's no delay there's not really a delay with the electron but there is an amount of travel Yeah. So that really affects the way that you end up mixing your drums and they can end up sounding flat. So it's similar to pushing a mouse around in Ableton Live or whatever DAW you use. Yeah, It's, yeah. There's no, you know, you have, unless you go into the actual note editor for whatever DAW you're using, then you're having to adjust, you know, you might have a pad controller or a keyboard to input those notes. But if you're just putting samples on the timeline, you're just pulling faders down yeah. and there's no tactile, you know what I mean? There's no kind of like physical sort of feeling of, you know, is, is, is a big connection between that and what you're hearing. Yeah. That's why um, I want to get there that, I mean, of course the ultimate ultimate goal is to be able to make a whole beat from beginning to end On, yeah. the, on, the, on the MPC. I'm, I'm able to get drums out of it, but, um, you know, sometimes you watch a video and then you say, yeah, and then do this, and then you wonder how he got there. Now, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so we just make up uh, another date. When, uh, yeah, just email yeah. me, man, when you've got your samples ready and you're ready to go again, just let me know. Okay, cool, cool. All, All right, right. Man, nice one. Thanks a lot, yeah. Yeah, have a good day, man. Nice to meet you. You too. Nice to meet you. Talk soon, yeah? Bye, Bye. Frank. Bye. Bye-bye.